Welcome to Pickleball Journey. If you're looking to improve your third shot drop, well, this video is for you. On this channel, we strive to make the highest quality content so you can improve your game. If you're new to this channel, subscribe for weekly videos. We're really excited to be partnering with The Kitchen. They make awesome content. Uh, be sure to check them out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. They've got it all. We're gonna jump right into the form and the acceleration through the ball. The first thing we're gonna talk about is making our swing is not too big. The, when we have a big backswing, we still a lot of times hit the ball too hard so Justin can take the ball or our opponent take the ball out of the air. We're going to keep it really simple, keep the paddle out in front, and just get a motion out in front of us. So just like this. I played, or uh, I did a, a Lego club. We had, or we named ourselves KISS, uh, K-I-S-S, -S, and that means that's an acronym meaning keep it simple, stupid, right? So same thing on your drops. Yeah, I thought it was keep it stupid, simple. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so you essentially, yeah, either way, let's just say. <laughs> okay, anyways, keep it simple. <laughs> um, but keep that, just pal out front. And what it enables us to do as well is making sure we're making good contact. Justin knows and everyone else knows I'm a huge fan of making good contact in the middle of the pal. So make, let's, let's not, Take this massive swing, big turns, keep a nice constant motion up through the ball, not turning our wrist a ton because then that creates too much spin that slides off the paddle. We want to keep it simple, locked wrist, smooth, even motion. All right, so something else that's really important as we're hitting third shot drops is our footwork. So two things that we want to focus on, uh, one being we want to make sure we're moving forward, we're moving into the ball uh, as we're hitting. So if we're falling back, as we hit, there's two problems with that. We're getting further away from the kitchen line, which we wanna be moving in towards, and we're gonna miss more balls into the net because our weight's coming back, we're gonna have less power on the ball. Now the second thing footwork's really important for is just getting in the right position. So Elisha talks about contact all the time, yep. <laughs> hitting it right in the center. Well, you can't do that if you're reaching too much. That's why you wanna be right in the spot where you wanna hit. So whether you're 17 or 71, as much little steps you can take as possible is best. So we'll do a couple here. So again, small steps. There you go. Always moving forward. So you notice, even if I'm up here and I come back, I still come back and I'm moving into the ball. Good. Nice. Good, back here. Always moving into it. And if he pulls me out wide on some of these, where I have to move a little further. I'm getting over here and I'm still hitting it right in the sweet spot because I'm having good footwork on that. Ooh, tough one. Oh, what a drop. <laughs> Last one here. Nice. Good. Next thing is we're gonna work, work on is this, the spin. There's two kinds of spin. The first is top spin and the second is back spin. Top spin, we have a vertical motion. Back spin, we're gonna be moving through the ball. Both of them, you have an angle at your, uh, of the paddle upwards, okay? Um, how that is, depending on how, the, how fast the ball comes. So the first one is top spin. So I need a couple balls here. I'm gonna go vertical, and that's gonna create motion on the ball that drops the ball down in front of Justin to create a nice kitchen shot, okay? A nice drop. The second one is gonna be backspin. So I'm gonna move through the ball. There's a couple, so back, and then through the ball. Sometimes it's just a little, it, it moves the ball up more. So in a ball that you maybe can't get to and you need a little more loft, you might do um, some, some backspin. Um, doing both of these helps with mixing up your drop so that the ball bounces differently when um, your opponent uh, is at the kitchen line so that it reacts, so that they maybe have to adjust to it or something like that. You wanna avoid keeping your drops exactly the same every time. So sometimes too, what we'll do to work on our third shot drop is to short, we call it shortening the court. So sometimes we do this just for drilling or even as a warm up. But instead of always hitting from back here, we'll move up and we'll hit some kind of at a shorter distance. This gets us working on moving up and back because Elijah's hitting all kinds of different balls. Okay. And I'm working on Notice how I'm coming back, but I'm reestablishing myself by shifting my weight forward. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really good on Justin's part. Even if I move him back and he has to step back, 
he establishes himself and then moves forward again after he's hit the ball to not give up any court space. Love that. Yeah. So now that we've hit a lot of these third shot drops, now it's your turn to get up, get out there and work on your game. Also, the 50th sale of these quarter zips online, we're gonna be giving away an engaged paddle. So be sure to check out the link below to our website and get your quarter zips today.